is interstellar travel possible? I mean, it's a fair question. It's a fair question. And of course, there's nothing like physically preventing travel to another star. Like there's there's no law of physics says that you must be contained to the solar system. Like of course, of course it's possible. But I, I when people ask is interstellar travel possible, like I just did, that's usually not what they mean by possible. Like is it is it physically possible? Of course, interstellar travel is physically possible. But there's a big big difference between possible and plausible and feasible and achievable like there there's stages here and so when people ask me and they often do is interstellar travel possible what they're what they're really asking is it realistically feasible like could humans do it and again someday in the distant future for enough time in the into the future we could probably figure it out in fact we're kind of doing it right now yeah, we we've done it. We we're sending probes across the, to other stars. Like it's happening right now. Now, we didn't do it for that purpose. I'm talking about like the Pioneer missions, the Voyager missions, New Horizons. All these missions are outside the orbit of the planets. Uh, some of them, especially the Voyager missions, are outside the heliopause, which is like considered the boundary of the solar system. This is where the solar wind from our sun meets and intersects with the general galactic junk. And once you cross that boundary, you're kind of outside of the sun's influence. Uh, but all these probes are on escape trajectories, which means they will never come back. So they're just gone. They're very, very far away, and with time, they'll keep getting further. They are in, they are either in or are approaching interstellar space. So, yes, we have achieved interstellar space travel with chunks of metal that are slowly losing energy and power and eventually will shut down, just keep flying through the vastness of space, you know, cold and alone. For a certain limited definition of interstellar space travel, we've done it. <sighs> kind of slow though. These space probes aren't pointed in the direction of any particular star because they were meant, their missions were to, to profile the planets. And so that's set the trajectory. Now they're just out there going in any old random direction. If they were pointed, like say if the Voyager probes were pointed at our nearest neighbor, Proxima Centauri, which is about four light years away, they would reach it in 80,000 years. Okay, interstellar travel is possible if you're willing to just send inert hunks of metal flying through the void for tens of thousands of years. You know, mission accomplished. So yes, in that limited definition, it's totally cool. But what we're really interested in when we talk about interstellar travel is at one level, humans traveling to other stars and colonizing worlds and you know doing all that stuff and if we can't do that then can we at least send active space probes that are gonna like take some pretty pictures and send those pictures back to us and hopefully the same people that sent the probe get to see the picture so like in a human lifetime is this possible when it comes to human colonization, human space travel, I'm not even going to touch that. The engineering and logistic challenges are so off the chart that, yes, in like 5,000 years or whatever, humanity might figure it out. That's, that's not happening in my lifetime, that's for sure, and probably not yours either. So let's take, let's take, I'm just not even going to bother talking about that. Like, it's just, it's, it's just science fiction. It's just science fiction at this point. So let's talk about space probes that can go to other stars, hopefully a, a nearby star, take some pictures, do some measurements, send those measurements back to us in a reasonable lifetime. In order to do this, in order to do this, you have to go really, really, really fast, right? Because the Voyager probe is going like, what, 36,000 miles per hour? They're going to take 80 thousand years to reach the nearest star no one has a budget that lasts that long okay 
So we need something that gets there on this scale of decades. You know, if we can get to Proxima Centauri in, say, 40 years, and then we'll send a message back that will take four years to get back to us. So like 50 years. Okay, okay, that's like the upper limit of what we're willing to accept. In order to do that, if you want to get to Proxima Centauri in 40 years, and it's four light years away, then do, 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 do some math. It's You have to go a tenth the speed of light. One tenth the speed of light. And that doesn't sound so bad. Like, oh yeah, a tenth the speed of light, that's no big deal. That is so ridiculously fast, it's not even funny. Like, am I laughing right now? No. This is my serious face. This is my serious face. I just laughed a little. But that one didn't count. I was laughing at myself. A tenth the speed of light is ridiculously fast. It's far faster than anything we've ever sent a spacecraft. Yes, inside of particle accelerators, we can send like little nuclei to close to the speed of light. And to do that, you know, we have to build these like giant accelerators and suck up a lot of energy. And that's for like a little tiny particle. We want to send a, a thing, right? A box <laughs> with, with some gear in it to take pictures and make measurements and send that information back to Earth. So there's two big options, two main options. One is, well, well the main consideration that you have to worry about is energy. Like you have to accelerate this thing, the spacecraft, up to a tenth the speed of light. That's going to require a lot of energy. Now, either the spacecraft can take that energy with it, or we can like beam that energy to it. So let me tackle the first one first, which is the spacecraft taking its energy with it. For the spacecraft to take its energy with it, you, this is like how rockets work, right? Rockets carry their fuel. The fuel is the source of energy to make the rocket go. Rockets are not going to get you to another star because the amount of oomph you get, the amount of thrust you get from a rocket is good. It's fine. It's cheap. It's easy for getting stuff off the ground, for orbiting around. But to get to the tenth of speed of light, you have to carry so much fuel and the problem here is that the more fuel you add, the heavier your spacecraft gets, which means it's harder to push. And so, you, oh, it's harder to push, so let's add some more fuel. But now you just made your spacecraft heavier, which makes it harder to push, which means you need more fuel, which makes it harder to push, which means you make more fuel. So you got a problem here. Chemical rockets are just not going to do it. There are other approaches. There are other, other ideas out there. Um most notably using uh, nuclear energy in some form. Nuclear energy, like pound for pound, you get so much more energy out of nuclear sources than you do chemical sources. So this is more efficient. If I take a pound of nuclear fuel, I get more oomph out of it than I do if I take a pound of chemical fuel. With nuclear fuel, you got a couple options here. If you want to explore, you want to make some designs. One is you can carry a bunch of nuclear bombs with you and detonate them off the back of the ship and hopefully design the thing so that you don't simultaneously blow up your ship when you're, you know, blowing up your nuclear bombs. And so it's like drop bomb and the bomb goes off and it pushes and then push, push, push like that. Okay, like, uh, like you know, it would take more nuclear fuel and more nuclear bombs than we've ever produced in the history of humanity. Okay, but it's a thing. And the spacecraft would have to be very big and very, very sturdy to survive like all these nuclear blasts going off behind it, which is going to make it super heavy. And remember, this thing's got to operate for decades. So it's got so it's got to like launch nuclear bombs over the course of years and not fall apart. Is it a good idea? Is it a bad idea? I don't know. It's like when you start adding up the numbers to like make this kind of spaceship happen it gets really expensive really fast like you know more money than is available in the world in a year so if like nobody spent anything like nobody ate nobody uh went to the movies these are my priorities i guess nobody like had a house or anything like we no one spent any money for a year and we saved all that money then like we could take all that cash and maybe start to build one of these spacecraft based on nuclear propulsion. 
That's if that's the nuclear bomb idea. The other idea is to have a nuclear reactor inside your spaceship and then have like a little hole cut out of one end. So like all these crazy nuclear reactions are happening and then it goes through a hole and that's like a rocket nozzle and then you have a rocket based on nuclear fuel. This is far, far more efficient than chemical rockets. Like chemical rockets are just out. But nuclear rockets can in principle get you to a tenth of the speed of light. You just need to spend more money than the world has. Will the world have the money? You know, as economies, as wealth grows, all that. You know, we can do stuff today that we couldn't do 100 years ago. Could it happen in 100 years? Could it happen in 1,000 years? Anyone's guess. Anyone's guess. So what's your guess? I'm very curious. Next week, I'll talk about the other option, which is keeping the energy with you and beaming it to your spacecraft. But I'll see you next week.